In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 street photography tips that every photographer should know. This is the advice that I would give myself if I was starting today. This video is also sponsored by MPB, but more on them later on. Street photography is an active endeavor. I've lost count of how many times I've covered upwards of 15 to 20 miles in a day. Street photography is all about exploring, finding little streets, alleyways to walk down, and being curious about the location around you. Now, if you have blisters or pain, your photography will go out the window. Trust me, I speak from experience. All you wanna do is find a cafe to sit in or go home. So if you don't want your photography to suffer, get good quality footwear, and I would get good shoes before actually getting a good camera because that will literally take you much further than having a good camera with blisters. Street photography is all about observing. Now, I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. How often when you go out in the city, you're just not paying attention. You're in your own thoughts, daydreaming, listening to music, listening to a podcast, and you're not really paying attention. Now, as therapeutic as it is, it's not the best way to stay in tune with where you are in order to get the best photos and just be the most observant. Next time you're out, try your best to scan the scene. If you see a patch of light, follow it. If you see a little alleyway, go down there. If you see someone doing something interesting in the distance, stop, pay attention and see if that develops. Look for hand gestures, look for people dressed a certain way, look for classic cars, look for any detail or anything interesting within the scene that will make it unique. So remove all the distractions and focus on the scene. At first you might find it difficult, like I did, because your mind just keeps going in a million different places, but over time it's a muscle, it will get better and it will get easier to stay focused and stay scanning the scene as you're walking around. Whether you take photos of people or not, you're still shooting in the street. So sooner or later, you will have to interact with people, be it a simple smile, it could be a general interaction, or even having to explain what you're doing. One of the most valuable skills I've picked up is learning how to read the room. By that, I mean when you're shooting in a place with people, not necessarily in your photos, just around you, being aware of how those people are reacting to you and to your camera, and to your presence there. Are they inquisitive or do they cover their faces? Do they seem relaxed or do they come across as agitated? All these little behavioral signs will give you a good idea of whether you can come closer and take more photos or whether you should put your camera down and step back. So do your utmost best to get better at reading the room because that will really make you a better overall photographer and person. Everyone will have their favorite focal length. Some people are diehard 28 mil fans, whereas others wouldn't even touch anything less than a 50 mil. Now, in terms of picking your focal length, it really depends on what you like and your approach. If you prefer scenes, then I would go for a 35 mil. If you prefer subjects, a 50 mil will be good. If you like to be right in the middle of the action, shoulder to shoulder with your subjects, a 28 mil will give you that. If you prefer to be a fly on the wall, observing from a distance, then an 85 might be a little bit better. Regardless of which focal length you choose, have one or two that are your firm go-to favorites. For me, it's 50 mil. However, still mess around with the other focal lengths and try to get at least proficient in them because being proficient in a selection of the common focal lengths from, let's say, 28 mil up to around about 85, I think that's a good place to be. And then have your 50 mil or your 35 as your go-to. Unlike other genres, street photography is incredibly easy to get into with a very low barrier to entry. You don't need a 5,000 pound full frame camera or an f1.2 lens just to start shooting. In fact, most photographers that I know are still using older kit that's very affordable. To be honest, an APS-C camera and an F2 Prime that fits in your pocket is all you really need. Not to mention, the more expensive your camera is, the less inclined you will be to take it out and to use it because you'll be worried about it. So buying something that's extremely affordable for you is important. Now, one of the best ways to get an affordable camera yet still get a high specification camera is to buy it used, which is where today's sponsor, 
MPB comes in. MPB is the go-to platform for buying and selling used camera gear. On average, you can save around 30% when buying used from MPB compared to when buying new. On top of that, you get a hassle-free service and a six-month warranty as standard. MPB is also a place where you can sell your unused camera gear and either exchange it for something else or free up some cash towards a trip. For those of you who want simplicity, this is definitely the way to go compared to selling privately online. Finally, this is an environmentally friendly way to buy and sell gear, given that the equipment already exists and all the packaging is 100% recycled. With over 600,000 annual customers and a five-star Trustpilot score, you can rest assured that this is a good place to buy and sell your gear. For more information, please click on the link in the description and thank you for watching this bit of the video. When you're out shooting, try to keep everything small and light. It's very easy to fill up your backpack with five different lenses, just in case, your laptop, just in case you want to edit on the train home, a tripod for whatever reason, and a bunch of other accessories. Then you've got a 10 kilogram bag, and after about, what, a couple of hours, you're exhausted and you can't be bothered to carry on. Not to mention that the more lenses you bring with you, the more time you'll be spending agonizing over which lens to use and in turn miss a bunch of shots. So keep it light, keep it simple, bring one body, max one, two primes, and that's it. The smaller the bag, the lighter the bag, the less kit you have, the better time you'll have overall when out shooting. Less really is more. Being able to understand and utilize different types of light in your photography will make a substantial difference to your work. So there are a few different types of lights to think about. The first one is backlighting, which is where the light is coming from behind the subject. Second one is side lighting, where the light is coming from the side of the subject or into the side of the subject. And the last one is uh, direct lighting, flat lighting, however you want to call it, where the light is directly in front of the subject. Backlighting will give a 3D and cinematic look, and it's very good for creating more ethereal types of images, strong highlight and shadow images, and generally kind of moody cinematic type stuff. Side lighting is good because it can give a very sharp result, however, still have some depth uh, to the image and utilizing light trails as a compositional element. And finally, direct or flat lighting will give the flattest look because the light is flat. It's not wrapping around your subject before going into the camera. Therefore, you get a two-dimensional image, which in some cases, when you have a very, a very simple and minimalistic scene, can work wonders. There are many compositional elements that we can use in our photography to help the viewer understand what's happening within the scene, such as leading lines, framing, foreground interest. However, the most important compositional tip that I can give you is to simplify the scene. Your job as a photographer is to figure out what to remove and not what to add. And don't get me wrong, when you're standing in front of an amazing scene, it can be so tempting to try and squeeze as much into the frame as possible, but that's a trap. You need to really figure out what is essential to the image and try to remove everything else. That's because if your viewer has to spend two minutes figuring out what on earth is going on, what they're looking at, they'll just get bored and move on. Your viewer needs to be almost slapped in the face with exactly what the scene and the image is about within the first couple of seconds. So by all means, include leading lines, frames, and all these compositional tools. Just keep in mind that the number one priority is to simplify the scene. When you get to a new location, it might be very overwhelming in terms of where to even start photography. Equally, if you're shooting all day, we can get into a trap of just going for the same types of shots. I know I do. One way to combat this and to actually end up with a more diverse album and a photo set from your day is to use what I call a three photo method when you're out shooting. The first image is the establishing one. It's a wide angle shot that will show the viewer where you are, what's going on. It'll give context and it'll make the viewer understand what they might expect from the rest of the photos. This could be a cityscape, a wide, a wide angle shot of the street, a landscape, whatever it might be. The second photo is a subject photo. This shows the viewer what's interesting within the scene. This can be 
a tighter shot at around 50 mil and you're showcasing the subject and the point of interest within the scene and finally is a tight or a detail photo which can be a 85 mil and you're focusing on small intricate details that on their own might not make much sense but when you put everything together the three photos it all tells a better story of where you are and the last tip is the easiest but it's also the hardest because it requires consistency and that is to just simply put in the work it's to get your 10,000 crap photos out of the way to get your 10,000 hours out of the way and to just keep going out and shooting and shooting so yeah watching these videos is good reading a few books is good attending a workshop is even better but nothing beats experience well i hope you found this video useful if you have any questions or your own suggestions please use the comments section down for that thank you again for watching and i'll see you soon bye bye